Hello and welcome to this presentation about digital ion strain in gay space interactive systems. My name is Teresa and this is work that we conducted with colleagues from Ulm University and University of Stuttgart. Digital ion strain is a well-known, frequently occurring negative byproduct of using digital screen-based devices. Researchers have started to investigate it already when digital devices first entered the workplace 60 years ago. Nowadays, 60 to 90 percent of computer users are already affected, and with the constant increase of digital devices in our lives, one can assume that the problem will become a serious health problem in our digital society. Mark Rosenfield even suggests that its assessment should become an integral part of today's standard eye examination, as so many people are affected. By experiencing symptoms like eye strain, tired or dry eyes, the problem negatively impacts users' general well-being and quality of life. Gaze-based interfaces further increase these problems as they add an active channel to the eye's primary function as perceptual organs. As such, they often require unnatural gaze behavior like gaze commands that put further strain on the eyes. However, prior research on gaze-based interfaces has largely neglected these risks. To gain an overview of the prevalence of digital eye strain in eye-based interaction, we conducted a systematic review. In particular, we aim to answer the question of how the gaze interaction community has experienced the digital eye strain as a problem in their research, what types of causes exist, what types of assessment methods they use, and what solution approaches exist to counter the problem. We started with the definition of two sets of keywords one including digital eye strain related terms and one including gaze interaction related terms. As gaze interaction is closely coupled to digital device use in general and causes that stem from the one or the other are difficult to distinguish, we included a broader set of keywords in the interaction related set to also detect general problems with digital eye strain in interactive systems. In the paper we report the results of our analysis following the PRISMA process for reporting systematic reviews. We used the deductive approach of content synthesis as we were looking for predefined concepts in the data. Specifically, we were looking for the concepts, assessment method, causes, solutions or qualitative feedback on digital eye strain that is not specifically related to one of the other terms. The final set of papers consists of 92 papers with 47 papers that were related to eye tracking applications and 45 papers that addressed causes, influences and solutions of general interaction techniques and devices on digital eye strain. In this talk, I will focus on the causes and solutions, dominantly on the ones regarding gaze-based interfaces. So, starting with the set of causes. We found passive causes that are device-based factors and include close viewing distance, display or user interface properties and the virgin's accommodation conflict that occurs with stereoscopic displays. On the other hand, active causes are the ones that actually stem from using the eyes to perform an input event. For example, we found that multiple gaze commands or frequently switching between gaze interaction techniques can cause eye strain. The two main active causes that we extracted from the reviewed papers are prolonged fixation duration and the large number of long saccades. Most of the gaze interaction techniques that we reviewed include both in some form. Some more detailed results that we found are DS occurs with and without visual feedback and it occurs independently of whether gaze was used directly or indirectly. Furthermore, long fixation times seem to have a stronger impact on eye strain than the number of saccades. So it seems that digital eye strain is a prevalent problem in eye-based interaction that occurs in a variety of application cases. In terms of solutions, we found a general set that includes general posture correction or correcting close viewing distances. Another cluster of solutions was found for the dry eye syndrome, where we found several works that aim to increase the blink rate. For active causes, we found only a few papers that consider digital eye strain in design of explicit gaze-based interaction techniques. For example, by including natural viewing behavior or deliberately choosing to induce short instead of long saccades. In the following, I will summarize our results in several key challenges and give recommendations for future research. The first challenge that we derive from our research is that the large variety of measures makes it difficult to compare results among studies. 
While some researchers apply very detailed questionnaires, other report single item feedback. Also, the number of different terms make it difficult to find all relevant uh, work service topics. Regarding the solutions, our survey reveals a lack of solutions to active causes. Only 5 of 47 papers that focus on explicit gay space interaction mention to actively consider digital eye strain in the design of their techniques. Lastly, we encountered a discrepancy between awareness and, and actions. We found a lot of papers that measured eye strain, although more as a side note, and did not report the results. Others reported medium to high values, but did not discuss implications thereof. On the other hand, many researchers seem to be aware of the problem, as they include breaks in their study design or don't let participants perform an interaction technique for a prolonged time period. So, digital eye strain is known in the community, but not yet fully acknowledged because techniques are often investigated in short-term settings and long-term effects are unknown. Our recommendations for future work are that digital eye strain should become an additional measure to be included in the evaluation of new gaze-based interaction techniques. Second, longitudinal studies of gaze interaction methods are important and should be conducted to reveal potential straining influences of these techniques. Both of them require the development of a consistent methodology to measure digital eye strain, as this would lead to standardized and comparable measures and results. For potential solutions, we found that an implicit integration would be desirable, as users are aware to digital eye strain and even care about it, but often want to take proactive actions. Therefore, we as designers of gaze interaction techniques are in demand of including healthy usage already in the design. To conclude, our key takeaways are that gaze interaction techniques cause digital eye strain, but often these negative impacts are not further discussed. Furthermore, there is no clear methodology how digital eye strain should be assessed and evaluated, and current solutions mostly focus on passive but not active causes. So this work basically is a call to change evaluation practices and start investigating alleviation techniques of digital eye strain in gaze-based interactive systems. Thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to the discussion.